Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're having a lovely week so far. So today I wanted to talk all about our favorite topic, which is of course, vintage design handbags. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. We are so happy to have you here. Over here, we love sustainable fashion. We love capsule wardrobes. We like looking sleek on a budget. We love vintage design handbags. We love planning we love organizing. And if you feel like that is right up your alley, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and join our community because we're all learning together. We all love to chat in the comments and yeah, we're just so happy to have you here. So in today's video, there are a couple of topics I want to talk about. The first one being, I will be comparing a replica Louis Vuitton bag with an authentic one, the same style. And that way you guys will be able to see what the differences are and what to look out for when looking on the pre-love market. The second thing I want to talk about is information that I've learned from you guys. So obviously I get a lot of messages on Instagram and I get a lot of comments on my YouTube videos about your personal experiences, what you've learned from buying vintage designer handbags, how you've rep repaired them and so on. And I thought it would be such a shame for me to read that information, talk to you guys personally, but not share it with the rest of you so I've collated um, some really great tips and tricks and I want to talk about it in this video and then the last thing I want to touch on is my current wish list handbags that I am looking out for on the pre-love market at the moment and my top three kind of favorites so without further ado let's just get straight into the video and we will start comparing these two bags So you're probably sitting there wondering why I have a replica Noe bag here with me when I have a authentic one. And that is because my friend came over the other day. The whole reason I even looked at the Noe bag was because my friend used to rock this one. She made it look so cool. Her style is very effortless and cool. She always looks good. She could literally put on a paper bag and she would look good. Um, and she used to rock this bag and I loved it. So once I started to get into vintage designer handbags, I knew straight away that I wanted to add a Louis Vuitton Noé to my collection. And as we were sitting there catching up, this bag came up in conversation and her parents only live around the corner from me. So we were straight away like, go home, grab the bag, bring it here because she was questioning whether or not it was authentic after she'd watched some of my videos. So anyway, she brought it over and initially when I saw the bag, I was like, yeah, it's a vintage bag. It's, it's definitely authentic. But the moment I pulled out my Noe bag and we started to compare every element of the bag, we realized very quickly how different they were. And I'm not an expert, I'm not an authenticator, but from my experience and my personal judgment and all the Louis Vuitton bags that I've now owned, this was not really ticking any of the authenticity kind of boxes. So unless there is a Noe style out there that is this, it has no code, It um, maybe it's a really old one, I don't know. But from my personal judgment, I don't think it's authentic. So I wanted to run through what comparisons we did and why we kind of came that, to that conclusion. So the first thing I noticed was size. So if I was to compare the bases of these bags and hold them up, as you can see, the authentic is much um, wider than the replica. So I noticed straight away that the size was off. This one was definitely smaller. Now, after we kind of determined that the size, I mean, the height is fine. It's just the base was very different. So we were like, okay, strike one. It's a def definitely a different size. The second thing I pretty much noticed straight off the bat was the texture of the canvas. Now, like I said, I have owned a lot of vintage Louis Vuitton Noe bags, and I can kind of tell canvas straight away just by the feel of it. And as I was feeling this one, which is the replica, it was very soft. Um, it's quite a nice feeling bag to be honest, but it was definitely more soft. It definitely had more of a faded look. That could just be because it's old, but it definitely felt more like a leather rather than a canvas. When you look at the authentic one, it's definitely a little rougher and definitely feels more like a coated canvas. So I don't know if you can see on camera there the differences. You can kind of see that there's a different color. It's definitely more of a ready kind of tone. So I did notice that the canvas was different. And in saying that, I have owned a Louis Vuitton pochette. It was from the early 80s. So it was very old. It was authentic. And the leather was very dark on it. And the canvas was quite faded and quite soft. So I do know that they age, but just not like this. Like I've never really felt anything like this before. We then moved on to the leather. And to be honest, 
I feel as though if anything was authentic, it would be this leather part. And I know it looks quite dark to you guys, and you're probably looking at the comparison and saying they're completely different colors. But like I said, I have owned a very old Louis Vuitton bag before. Um, and it had, I wonder if I've got a photo of it. If I do, I'll insert a photo. But the leather on it was very, very dark. So that to me didn't scream that it's a fake. Uh, I actually thought, oh, that makes it look more if anything makes it look more authentic. So I wasn't too worried about the leather and the way that the leather is wearing is definitely similar to how a Louis Vuitton bag would wear. And then another huge indicator was obviously the hardware. It is all completely rusted and I did try to polish it with Brasso and it was not able to be polished. And from all of the vintage designer um, Louis Vuitton handbags I've had, every single one of them I've been able to polish up with Brasso. So I did attempt to polish it up and it was not working. So the hardware is not brass and it does have the Louis Vuitton engraved on the actual rivets here, but you're not able to polish up. And then another thing we noticed was the interior it was completely different. So it's got this soft kind of vinyl sort of look on the inside and then it's also got a zip compartment. And I was completely aware that some Louis Vuitton bags do have that kind of interior and they do have a zip compartment. So it wasn't a dead giveaway, but it is something we noticed that was different to my one. See here, this is like a canvas and there's also no pockets on the inside. So they were the initial things that we noticed when we started looking at the bag. And my friend said to me, you know what, hold on to the bag because I did mention to her, I would love to make a video out of a comparison because I feel as though this information would be really useful for you guys. So as I held on to it for a few days, each time I looked at it, I noticed something new that was different. And I feel like this is what's really important. It is not when you're looking at a bag and you're trying to de determine whether it's authentic or not, it's not the major things. You'll notice the major things kind of straight away, but you really have to look with a fine tooth comb and really look at the little details. So there are, it's almost like, how did I not notice that it wasn't real now that I've kind of seen all of the differences. Now, in addition to the hardware not being able to be polished, I also noticed that one of the rivets on the side was completely off center. See here? That just wouldn't happen on a Louis Vuitton bag. They have very strong attention to detail and they would make sure that that was completely center. So that was another little giveaway. Now, another one that my friend and I noticed, and it wasn't after, until after a while, um, was the placement of the strap. So, as you can see, the strap here connects directly to the top, like that. On the authentic one, it connects more down to the side and it has a rivet here. And this in here is where my code is. I don't even think I'll be able to show you guys the code on camera because it's very, very faint. So you can see a little bit there. It says A2 kind of there. But on the inside here is where there's a code. And yeah, so obviously the placement of the strap was different compared to... I wish I had more hands, guys. I need to be an octopus. Um, completely different placement of the straps. So how did we not notice that straight away? I don't know, but it's not until you really start to look that you notice these things. The other thing was with the zip, the zip is just a very generic one. It doesn't have Louis Vuitton or anything on it. And the other thing is the stitching around the zip is completely um, raw. So they've kind of just cut it. And I don't know with a vintage Louis Vuitton bag, I mean, I don't have one that I can compare it to with a pocket on the inside, but I would assume that they wouldn't have like just a raw edge like that. They would probably fold it and be a little more meticulous about how they did that. But it just means that there was more chance for damage and fraying and wear and tear because it was all kind of, um, yeah, just open and raw. So that's another thing I noticed. And again, yeah, the zip was um, just a generic zip. There is also another tag on the inside here that says Louis Vuitton Paris made in France and that is something that mine does not have. So they were all the things that we kind of noticed and that is why I have come to... Also, there is no code on this bag. I have looked high and low and there is no code. So we came to the conclusion that this bag is not an authentic one 
but the reason why I thought it was so important for me to share this is because with vintage bags, it's very hard to tell whether or not something is authentic because it is so old. It's hard to find another bag to compare it to, especially if it's a rare kind of style um, and you can't really find another one on the internet to compare it to. But you just need to be aware of just little things like placement of hardware making sure that there's all that attention to detail so after reviewing both bags my friend and i really did come to the conclusion that it is not authentic it is just a very very good quality replica and it is good quality her mum used this for years um, it's held up very well it's worn very well and because it is a vintage style i don't think that if she wore it anyone would really notice that it was fake because it just looks like a vintage bag but I thought I would share this information with you guys because you might um, now start to look at things that you wouldn't have looked at before. And again, I'm going to put another disclaimer in here. I know anyone who's watched all of my videos, you're probably sick of this, but I am not an expert. This is my personal opinion, my personal experience. This is based on what I think. And I did even think about, should I even be posting this kind of stuff because I'm not an expert? Should I even have a say? But I do think that it is useful information and it's information that I kind of use. So take it with a grain of salt, but it really does show you that looking at the finer details um, is really important. So I thought that was a bit of fun because I've never seen a replica um, Louis Vuitton bag before and I was very interested to see um, where the differences were. I also get a lot of you guys sending me photos of vintage designer bags on Instagram and asking me do I think it's authentic or not. I try my best to get back to all of you guys messages and try to help you where I can but as you can probably imagine I get a lot of them so I can't help each and every one of you so I will do my best but if you don't get a response from me I'm really sorry but either I didn't see the message or I just have not had the time to respond to everyone and it's unfortunately it is getting to that point I'm loving that I'm growing here on this platform and I love that you know I'm slowly slowly growing on Instagram and I wish I had the time to sit with each and every one of you and really help you kind of purchase these bags and go through them and determine whether they're authentic or not so I do what I can sometimes I'll sit there I'll set aside time and I'll respond to as many comments and as many messages as I can but some do slip through the cracks just because I don't have the time so I'm really hoping that videos like this will be able to help you guys so now that we've compared the bag I wanted to share with you some information that I've learned from you guys so I had a comment on one of my previous YouTube videos and I actually posted this comment to my Instagram story because I wanted you guys to know this information it was from a subscriber Whitney Collins hey Whitney and she mentioned that she is pretty much an avid Gucci uh, vintage Gucci buyer and seller. She buys vintage handbags, fixes them and sells them and she's been doing it for a really long time and she's kind of a little bit of an expert in the field and she mentioned that when you're dealing with a disintegrating interior of a Gucci bag where it's like that powdery consistency if you use a vacuum or and a really rough kind of bristle brush um, and you keep kind of rubbing it and vacuuming it out that will get rid of it without having to use any soap or any water which is really good news for those of you who are doing it to a bag that has leather on it because you don't want to get the leather wet so in hindsight if i had have known that technique i would have done that for my um gucci satchel that i did about a year ago now um, but unfortunately for the Gucci Diana tote that I did recently, that was like a sticky residue and I wasn't able to vacuum it out. I really did have to use the water. But it is good to know if it's a powdery consistency, you should be able to use a bristle brush. Now the other thing she did mention was that um, it also takes a lot longer when there's a darker interior. So obviously if it's lighter, she finds that it's a quicker process, but when it's darker, it takes her a lot of time. So maybe that's something to be mindful of when you're looking at bags to buy. And the third thing that she mentioned was that vintage LV flaking interior cannot be helped. She's tried it um, and you just have to replace the lining. So I've actually never tried to fix a sticky interior um, lining of a Louis Vuitton bag, but that is so handy to know because I assumed that I would be able to use the same technique as I did with my um, Gucci Diana tote, but Whitney has obviously tried and tried 
and it does not work. So that is really good information to know because now when I see a sticky Louis Vuitton interior, I am just going to steer clear. If you are someone who has fixed that um, or you've had experience with that or you've kind of helped it in some way, leave a comment below. I also had another message from someone saying that they purchased a vintage Cartier bag, um, a leather one, and it was beautiful quality the hardware was amazing the leather was beautiful and i often see these bags pop up on ebay auctions but i never really think to purchase them just because i haven't had any experience with cartier vintage handbags but um, one of my followers has and she said that they are amazing and they're completely underrated so if you are someone who is looking at a vintage cartier handbag and you're wondering whether or not it wears well or if it's really good quality apparently they are amazing so get your hands on it if you can get it for a good price another tip that i got from a lovely subscriber was that she purchased a vintage louis vuitton bag and it did not have a date code and she was so worried about it but when she received the item she kind of did her own checks and she was like every other thing on this bag um, looks authentic to me so she was able to take a ton of photos of it of the stitching of the hardware and everything else and she sent all the photos to bagaholic 101 and they were able to authenticate it even though it didn't have a date code because as we know some um, Louis Vuitton handbags made before a certain period don't actually have a date code so that was really good to know because I honestly did not think that bagaholic would even look at a bag um, if it didn't have a date code so that was just handy to know obviously if you're buying a bag without a date code just make sure you check every other element of the bag um, just to ensure that you've done your own kind of checks first um, but it is good to know that if you do purchase a designer item and you are almost certain that it's authentic and it doesn't have a date code, you are still able to get it authenticated. So that is some great information I've received from you guys just as of lately. There is definitely more, but I just can't remember right now. Um, I will be sure to kind of collate anything new that I learn just so I'm able to update you guys in a video like this. If you do have any um, personal experiences or any tips or tricks, please leave them in the comments below for all of us to see and I will make sure that I collate that information and include it in another video. So don't don't forget to do that now the other thing I wanted to mention was what's on my wish list currently so at the moment I've taken a little bit of a step back of buying vintage designer bags because I did recently buy like four of them and I am really enjoying styling them and using them but I of course have an ongoing wish list my top three handbags that I'm looking for at the moment is the first one is the Gucci backpack with the bamboo top handle my friend Lou um, she purchased one recently in this beautiful deep green color and it is beautiful I'm in particular I'll insert a photo looking for a black one leather and I'm wanting the smaller version because I feel as though I personally would use the small one more rather than a bigger backpack so that is what I'm on the hunt for first and foremost secondly I'm actually really loving the Louis Vuitton Saint Jacques bag I think that's how you pronounce it I'll insert a photo but I this style bag where it's like almost like an upside down kind of triangle I see it styled everywhere it is so in right now and I think it looks great and that Louis Vuitton bag is definitely that kind of style so I'm also on the hunt for one of those I would love one in an epi leather in the brown so I'm currently keeping my eye out for that if you see one let me know over on Instagram and I'll be sure to have a look at it and of course still on my wish list is a large Celine duffel bag I still haven't purchased one or added one to my collection in particular I'm looking at the black macadam print because currently I do not have a large duffel bag that is designer I actually have one that I think is from Kmart from years ago so that is something I would like to add to my collection and something that I think I would use a lot so they are the top three bags on my wish list obviously I have so many more that I see and love um, and that's the beauty of buying secondhand bags is you almost don't know what you're going to get until you start browsing and you see it because it's not like buying a new bag where you want one, you search for it and you buy it. You kind of have to wait for the bargain to pop up and you find out about all these new styles that you never knew even existed. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some useful information out of it. If you take away anything, it is to have a very strong eye for detail when you're looking at purchasing a vintage designer handbag or any kind of pre-loved handbag for that matter. Um, I always 
get my handbags authenticated once they arrive before I even start using them. That way, if I if it's not authentic, I have time to kind of rectify the issue with the seller. Because you don't want to leave it past. Sometimes they have like a 30 day refund policy and you don't want to let, let it go past that point. So that is my top tip when it comes to authenticity. The other thing is if you are purchasing from either Depop or Vinted, where there is no kind of refund policy, I always ensure that I kind of have extra um, measures in place so you can either get the seller to send you a bunch of photos and from those photos have it authenticated before you make the purchase or for me personally when I've bought designer handbags off Depop they will generally have some kind of proof of purchase whether that's a screenshot an email or an actual physical receipt and also don't forget to leave in the comments below any handbags that are currently on your wish list we would love to know and I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your week and a beautiful weekend. And I will catch you in my next video. Bye, guys.